When the State House was almost finished, the legislature decided to commission a painting to commemorate its completion. They chose the artist William H. Powell, as he had just finished a giant painting for the rotunda at the U.S. Capitol. The legislature, always interested in showing the significance of their state, decided if Powell was good enough for the U.S. Capitol, he would certainly be good enough for Ohio's Capitol. And, in 1857, they gave him $5,000 to paint a significant work of art to hang in the rotunda. Powell was familiar with the heroic stories about Commodore Perry and his thrilling defeat of the British Navy off the shores of Lake Erie. It was decided that this was going to be the subject of the painting. Powell chose to recreate the scene where Perry was transferring from his badly damaged ship, the Lawrence, to the relatively unscathed Niagara. Powell painted Perry standing up in the small ship's boat with his 12-year-old brother grabbing at his lapels, presumably trying to get him to sit down. Powell did this painting in his studio in New York and is said to have used dock workers from Brooklyn as his models. Powell added a number of details, including the ship's colors flying from the bow of the boat and his battle flag draped over his shoulder. He's pointing deftly to the Niagara, but looking behind him as if to say, we shall move forward. Powell had no doubt seen Emanuel Lutz's heroic painting of Washington crossing the Delaware, and it is impossible not to draw connections between these two works. Can you see how Powell's depiction of Perry makes him look heroic? Powell's detail in the painting, as well as the large size, helps to take you right into this tense moment. You can see shells exploding, and maybe even hear the zing of musket shots. The beauty of this painting betrays its reality. There are too many men in the boat. Most accounts record there was only Perry and four others. His brother was not with them at all. The flag that is depicted has the wrong number of stripes. Also, if Perry had flown this flag on the front of the boat, it would have been like a target. In reality, the flag remained aboard the Lawrence. It would have been ludicrous to stand up in a tiny boat while trying not to get shot. Perry did carry his battle flag depicting the motto, Don't give up the ship. And there is something draped over Perry's shoulder, but it looks like it has stars, which his battle flag did not. As an aside, one must love the irony of Perry leaving his ship with his flag, don't give up the ship. There is another interesting detail. Powell has painted in an African American. African American men comprise about 15% of Perry's crew. There is evidence that Perry was quite close to a Cyrus Tiffany, and it is possible that this man is Tiffany. There is also some evidence that it was Tiffany who sheltered Perry from harm's way as they rode. Powell uses this painting to tell a story. The sailors depicted here could be a metaphor for all of the brave souls who fought for our state, for our government, to create our democracy. Powell was using his power of storytelling to help viewers connect to the ideas of honor and courage. When Powell finished this work in the mid-1860s, it was indeed deemed a masterpiece. Powell took the painting on the road to share its glory. Also, he felt that the painting was worth much more than the original price he had agreed to, and he went back to the Ohio legislature and demanded another $10,000 more for it. Well, the legislature balked at this, but after some debate decided on providing Powell another $5,000 to make the total cost of the painting $10,000. But ever the enterprising artist, Powell had again aroused the interests of the U.S. Congress and was able to secure another commission for $25,000 to paint the same scene but a little bit larger. This painting is displayed in the U.S. Capitol right outside of the Senate chambers. In total, Powell was able to earn $35,000, more than $600,000 in today's money, from two paintings depicting the same scene and hung in two important government buildings. Now let's look at the painting itself. Powell is using his artistic skills to make sure you are always looking at Perry. He has made the ground around Perry's face white to make sure the face pops out. He is using the technique of triangulation to always lead your eyes back to Perry's face. Look at the sailors on the boat. The man at the stern looks up at Perry, as does his little brother and the two other oarsmen. Powell has made it so that your eyes go directly to Perry's face. As Powell wanted to show the magnitude of Perry through his artistic skills, one also has to think that by his success at this painting, this would help to secure him as a great painter who is a master of the heroic portrait. Here the painting speaks not just for the history and magnitude of the event, but also to the skills of the painter. Powell understood that to be successful, his painting had to quickly show and inspire great qualities in order to be deemed worthy of hanging in the rotunda. Do you think he achieved this?